Well, good afternoon, YouTube. Madam Roy back again. Back to you with a review of this Sony all-in-one stereo system that I picked up at the thrift store the other day for $9. Sorry I didn't get to it last night. I got really, really busy and uh, just fell asleep, so that's my only excuse. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get started. This is a really nice, high-quality setup. It has uh, it's a two point it's a two channel basically. It has the speakers that attach to the side, and if I take the grill off, you can see they're not super large. I would say that's maybe a four, maybe a five inch uh, speaker in there. Um, very very good sound. Lots of bass out of this system. Um, I checked to make sure none of the the membrane is totally intact. There's no cracks or anything, so that's always a good sign. On the front, you have your basic controls. Um, there are some lights here for record, uh, CD synchronization, DBFB, which is the double bass. Then you have near and wide. That's basically uh, depending on um, how you're, how close you are, how far away you are to the stereo itself. Use this button to adjust that. If you're sitting, I think, within five feet, you want to have it on the near setting. If you're more than five feet or closer to 10 or 15 feet away, then you want to have it on the wide setting, and that gives you the um, the best sound. Got your play buttons back and forth. This controls the uh, CD and the cassette. Um, stop, pause, uh, FM. This is how you go to the bands, FM, AM. Uh, tuning. This is a computerized cassette deck with auto reverse, and it does have um, auto advance one track. And auto back one track and that is both on the CD and cassette so basically if you're playing a cassette and you want to forward to the next song you push that button it'll go to the next song or if you want to go back one song you push that button while it's playing mind you and it'll go back one song got your volume buttons here power and function and this is the uh, cassette portion to open it you just push that and it comes down you can see down in there we have the head. Now because this is auto reverse head, there's actually two of them. When um, it's ready to play the second side, this actually flips over. And um, basically you can access that head. So I need to go ahead and clean the heads. So whenever you do that in an auto reverse deck, remember you have to clean two heads. You have to actually clean this one, then go ahead and put a tape in and hit the uh, side change button. It'll flip that over and you have to clean the next head. Everything looks in good shape. The uh, pinch rollers look good. The cap stands all look good. Um, I don't think it requires any belts or anything because the rewind and fast forward is fluid. There's no uh, slowness there or, and there's no fluttering when you play the tape. So that all looks good. But I can tell if you look really closely, you can see that there is some dirt on the head, especially right there. And it's just got it's just gotten um, dirtier from years and years of playing, and you can hear that um, when you try to play a tape. It just sounds kind of muffled. So I'm going to go ahead and clean those heads real quick, and then um, I'll give you a demonstration of the stereo. All right, before I actually do a audio demonstration of the stereo, I wanted to show you some of the uh, inputs in this. You actually have an audio input um, for, they say it's for a mini disc, but this would work to plug in an MP3 player. Basically, uh, you just have to get a cable that's um, RCA to little headphone jack, and I have tons of those, and I will definitely be using one. So that's an input and an output. One really interesting thing with this player as well is it actually has optical input. So if you could actually hook up a mini disc or any um, stereo component that actually uses that optical cable and you would actually have a true digital connection to the stereo that's very nice that's not something you usually find on a uh, a little system like this and you even have a headphone out um, in the back now this is the only sticker I see on the back there is more underneath but uh, I'll show you guys that in a minute um, you can see that uh, it was manufactured in February of 1998 so this is by no means a modern system. This system is about 17, 18 years old now. Um, this just You can pause the video if you want to read this, but basically just talking about um, the data manufacturer, where it was manufactured, which was in Tokyo, Japan. So very, very high quality system. 
All right, I've removed the back cover so you guys can have a better look at uh, the inner workings, or as much as you can, of this fine quality stereo system. You can see you have the AM antenna up here. It's one of these like tube antennas. Um, it's not actually working right now. I got to make sure that's hooked up properly. I really haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, I'll probably do that once I end the video. Uh, for those of you that are interested, this is a Sony model HCD-ED1 compact cassette deck receiver. So this is basically a, a very high quality receiver. Back in the day, I can imagine this probably sold for a good two or three hundred dollars. Now, one other thing I found really interesting is the way you hook up the speakers. The speakers actually use, and if I can pull it out, I'll show you <laughs> a five-pin DIN connection. This is very similar to uh, what the old computers used to use for their keyboards. Um, I don't know why they chose this. I, I can only assume to, um, to make sure that you have the best quality sound possible. Um, you de other than using regular speaker wire, using something like this, you'll definitely get um, better audio quality and you have more options. I I'm really surprised though because seeing as there's only one speaker in here, it's not like it's sending multiple signals out. I, like I said, the only reason I can think they did that is just for uh, for sound quality purposes. When I first got this stereo, everything worked properly except the uh, CD player. And it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to figure out why, but I discovered the problem. This particular stereo, being of a very high-end quality, uses a glass cover. And the, what actually happens is when you go to play a CD, you put the cover down and it activates this switch right here. You can kind of see it right there. It pushes down on that switch. Well, over the years, the switch has worn down. And it, what was happening is it wasn't making good contact. And that was because... When I first got it, there was a little rubber pad here that the manufacturers put in. I can only assume to protect the glass, because again, if you do push it down now, you can kind of hear that it hits a little bit. So all I had to do was remove that little rubber piece, and that gave it just enough room to go down and fully activate the switch. And now, when you go to play a CD, you go to function, you go to CD, you can see it actually spins up before I would actually have to push down and put pressure on here for the uh, CD player to work. I also wanted to show you guys uh, the remote here. Now, I'm so happy that this was the right remote. It was actually sitting next to the unit and it said Sony, but the batteries were totally dead and I wasn't sure if it was the right one, but indeed it is. You can see it does function turning it on and off. It has a lot of different functions on here. You have your power button, uh, you can adjust the display here. Uh, this is to turn the uh, DBFB or the bass boost on and off. You have your play controls for the CD player, the radio, the tape, uh, the direction of the tape, uh, Dolby noise reduction, uh, record because this is a play and a record deck, uh, CD repeat, a stereo mono button. That's mainly for, I think that actually only works when you're in the FM or AM band, it actually, you can go to mono and it gets rid of a lot of the noise if you have a weak channel. Uh, tuning playback mode, uh, your volume up and down, and then you have your various options. It has a sleep timer, uh, a timer. This is actually how you uh, select up and down for your sleep timer. I believe it goes up to 120 minutes. Uh, your memory, and then this is just kind of like your enter button. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration. I've actually burnt a CD with some of the uh, YouTube uh, ad-free music, so I can go ahead and play this for you guys, and I, there aren't many issues with copyright protection, so be back in just a minute. <laughs>
right, guys. So this was my review of my new Sony all-in-one CD stereo s system that will be in my bathroom. Yep, that's where it's going to stay for the, for the foreseeable future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.